I know it's too late, I know I've been waiting, but look, shuttle pack, set six, brilliant. <laughs> Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection. This time it's the Shuttlecraft Set 6. Now, I'm a bit late with this. They've had this one out for maybe a month, six weeks or so. And I have been actually sitting on this for a, for maybe a week or so now. Because they were doing a um, the Black Friday deals and I bought this part of this. Usually with all the five of the Shuttlecraft sets before this, I've got a discount code which took £20 off or 20% or whatever it was. So it made it a lot cheaper. Which I didn't get one for this because I think their um, marketing, Eagle Moss's art, uh, marketing department seemed to be a bit lacking I think on that. But I don't know. That's, that's between me and Eagle Moss. Hey ho. So, Shuttlecraft set six. Usual artwork for a shuttle pack set. And I'm glad they're keeping up with the normal boxing, otherwise they look stupid. They are doing certain ones. I did the um, Discovery, uh, the, the cloaked Discovery, which is in a separate, different packaging, which had the original box. The sleeve was different, and the, the, either repackaging for resale or. I don't know, I'm just glad that on some levels they've kept the original ones, but for a, for a collector's point of view, it's really quite good. Quite easy to, to crease this already, so I can't really collect this. So in this Shuttle's Pack Pack set, there is a, swing, a Sphinx work pod. I think that will be that. It'll be the next gen's version of a work bee. Type 18 Shuttle pod. I'll put... That possibly, yes, and then Hawking Type 6 shuttle, which has got to be the one from which well, looks like it's from Star Trek 5 but with 1701D on the back of it. Okay, confusing. And Janeway's armored shuttle from the um, last episode of Voyager. So let's get these out. Ah. See, I like these on some level, nothing in the box, nothing on my sleeves. Right, so what order should we do? Should we do in the order that they come out with? Yes, 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 yes. Right, so the Sphinx book. Oh, I need to edit this. <laughs> 21, there we go, 21, 22, 24, 23. So, get you in for the magazine, light off. Now, this will be a little bit longer than normal because there's four packs here anyway, but bear with me. So these are a lot smaller books, they're kind of a little bit smaller as the Discovery versions anyway, but Shuttle Pod, Work Pod. So these looks like marker pens. And the bottom of there, and then this weird pod bit, but it doesn't sh see anything that they could, any arms that would come out, any um, devices that would come off this, that could help this do what it's supposed to be doing. Unless it's just a garbage pod and you just stick things on the back and take your rubbish out. 2.2 meters, 24 centre, 2000 ms meters per second. Sphinx work pod, small maneuverable vehicle. We never saw this. It was always in concept art. And I think there was Oh, wasn't there something in the tech manuals which showed these? I know there was, was one or two in the Ships of the Line calendars which were already rendered and pictured and, and it's, it's there. So we knew what these looked like beforehand. But I'm sure these were in the tech manuals, but we never ever saw them. It's like with the the Enterprise D, you actually had where the saucer is. Pretend that's a saucer, right? You got the bridge on the top. You have the main shuttle bay behind here, and behind, inside that, we only we saw, mostly, was shuttle bay 2 and the cargo bay. But the main shuttle bay actually had, it went the entire deck, a couple of decks underneath the bridge, but it was the entire section underneath it, it was massive. If you got, if you ever downloaded the, there was a, a virtual walkthrough, I think, I think CBS banned it from, from anybody, downloading it or something but it actually shows you all the the shuttle bays shuttlecraft there's 
20, 30 odd different shuttlecrafts on there, but we never actually saw it in the series, which might have been an idea of, oops, we didn't want to go down that route to show you these things, but it's nice that fan, fan art comes out in the long run anyway. So kind of nacelles from the next generation. There's orange on the side, so can't, they can't be warp nacelles, but just enough to get you from A to B and do what you're supposed to be doing. And a full acudogram sort of thing, diagram, schematic, shall we say. Pilot seat. Oh, pilot seat, yeah, there. It's very small. You've got the, you've the engines here. Cargo bed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Open cargo area. So this is, it could take, what, handbags? Six handbags of stuff? I don't know. Tractor emitter. So everything's actually fitted inside this nacelle then. Tractor, thruster, yeah, thruster coil. Hmm. It's nice to see something like this that we never, ever saw on screen. And we actually did see this one. Wasn't this one of the Defiant Shuttles that they kind of, um, I think we saw once or twice, if that, in Deep Space Nine? They had to be more compact to fit inside the Defiant because it was a lot smaller ship on Deep Space Nine. But still, you can tell it is a shuttlecraft. You can tell it is Federation. Shuttle type 18 shuttle pods. So they, even saying that, would they have used this as a full full scale run of shuttle pods? I'm saying it is a shuttle pod, not a shuttle craft, so yeah, that probably explains that one straight away. So I'm looking at the design pictures on here. Defiant Shuttle 01. Oh, there's a fin, it's like a bit that comes out there. And this strange bit on the top. Looking like a bit of a sensor array, maybe extra thrusters. It's really good that, but I do like that picture. It looks very much CG, but very, very nice. So very small shuttle, a two, two person shuttle there. So what's this top bit? This is a long range sensor array. Okay, because they had that on the runabouts on Deep Space Nine, the first series with the Rio Grande and the Ganges. was kind of a bit of a bar over the top of it, which was an add-on, which we saw in other ships anyway, like the um, Phoenix, the Miranda class and stuff like that. Right, Type 6 shuttlecraft was 24th century, he was Enterprise. So I don't, well, I think I do, but it is the one from Star Trek V. If not, it looks very, very much like it. Schematic, maybe they'll say something on here about the actual Star Trek V model. So it does show Steve, named after Stephen Hawking, who died last year, unfortunately. He was an absolutely brilliant person. I mean, I'm clever, I'm smart, but he is another level. So, <laughs> I'm sure it is the... Um... Okay, fine, I don't remember when they had this on Next Generation. Maybe it'll tell us in the book. I'm determined, best selling people at the time. Yeah, so it's just telling us Shuttlecraft. Fort Dr. Soren of Vivian 3. What? We know he was stranded there. Hawking, the Hawkins were described despite to collect Picard and convey him to another part of the planet where he entered Enterprises. Detached source. Ah, oh, so this came and picked him up. This was the one that came and uh, in front of him. Oh, okay, so we're going to see, saw this in Star Trek Generations, right? That explains why I don't recognise it so much. Okay, so another schematic there. Great, goody goody. Last book is Janeway's Armored Shuttle. There's a lot of problems with the end of Voyager. Suddenly, after seven years, Janeway turns up as an admiral, suddenly comes with 20 years worth of technology, which gets Voyager back, but then would kill her own timeline. Wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, as Doctor Who fans will know. You play with the timeline, you're going to get severely messed with. 
That's why she got assimilated and then died, and we don't know. She did, looks like she died, she didn't, but watch watch Endgame again if you want. But is the um, ablative, is it ablative armour? Is it just extra shielding armour? Let's change the original shuttlecraft into this. But this is the armoured version. I don't know whether we actually had that as a, as a shuttle pike. I can't fully remember. Please comment in the, in, below if we had that shuttle in a shuttle pack previously. But this is the armoured version, so you're not going to see much. We've had the Voyager before with the armoured and its standard class and the Borg modified one, which I really liked. But yes, all four books and all reviewed. So let's get on with the first. So we're getting for the. Um, Excuse me, the Sphinx. Beautiful Akuda Grand. I would love to to set these up somewhere. See everything in there. With a bit of light behind these, would be an amazing, an amazing look to to anybody's anybody's display. God, I'm glad they're not stuck in. So let's have a look. Now, the way a second. Ah, you can see through it. Right, see the, both the um, the seats there. That's oh, really cool. Let's get you zoomed in a little bit. Tiny ship, you can see it's part of my hand if that. But you've got oh, where did the handbags go? It's just all it is is just basically this this pod then, on front with a couple of engines, and then you've got whatever this part here would would clamp onto. Would it clamp onto the front of a Defiant with the nose cone, and that would be be able to pull it push it along? I don't know. Some panel work on there looks really nice. I'm glad you can see straight into the cockpit. That's really, really good. 46. Ah, that's just a sticker on there. I prefer if that, yeah, that orange part would have been clear. So, I mean, it's just a, a strange flat platform part. With the back window kind of looks like a, um, a pickup truck with a flat back, but that bit is so thin. What's that say inside there? Can we read that? Ah, hydraulics, stay clear. Oh no, back off. So the warp nacelles, well, the, the engine pods on the sides, very, very different, very nice. It's a shame that this wasn't part of the next generation. But we can always imagine that it was. You got the, the view below so they can see and you're flying over something to do what you want. Good overall vision. Oh, it's really, really nice, that. Hmm. On the back here says Enterprise. Have they spelled this right? Enterprise, not Enterprise, like they had before in a shuttle pack. Very, very nice. I like that. Let's keep that over there. Second one. Another recruiter gram. There we go. That way around, I think they're better. It's not exactly the same size, but very similar on size wise. Because you've only got a two person pod there. So let's get a look on this. Define it should low one. A lot less detail on here, but well, this has got to be a warp nacelle. But that, wow, that is a heck of a lot of detail. They're missing paint dabs. I wonder if it's missing it for a reason or not missing it. I do like the shuttle pack. Oh, it looks like a duck, weird duck bill there, doesn't it? Hmm. It kind of looks like a flattened shuttle with this part stuck on top of. A massive nose on it. With nothing else apart from the NX number and a couple of Dalek bumps. Another reference to Doctor Who there. I do like. It's the whites and the blues that we really do look quite well together. Nice. Oh, 
I'm not entirely certain about why these are here and why this back section here is blue. And a lot of the uh, metals from the 24th century must be coloured duck egg. Uh, yeah, duck egg blue. There were the greys before that, whites, next generation, not no, extra, uh, movie era metals or paintwork. But why have a blue and a white? I don't know. Looks funky enough. Right. So let's get that one next to the Sphinx. Third one. My, um, I'm not sure about. Plop. I think I have I do look. I wanted to get these out of here, but I, I just didn't rip these open. Get them so filthy so quickly. They're absolutely brilliant. The scratch across there, but that's on the plastic only part, not on the actual decodogram. Amazing. It's one little bit of extra stuff that they do with the eagle moss, which is absolutely brilliant. And this doesn't want to come out. Come on, Mr. Hawking. Thank you. So, this definitely is. Hmm. A scratch on there. Yeah. I mean, I suppose on timeline, sort of. Actually, actually, on normal filming, when this model was out out for Star Trek Five, that was nineteen eighty nine, was it? The next generation was going for a few years when they got Star Trek VI and seven. I suppose they could have just dug this out of the um, out of mothballs, sort of, for the model it's, itself. Because these parts here, they're kind of like a Knight Rider sort of thing, as, as the shuttle was, was a bit when Uhura was planting this to fly this down to get Chekhov and Sulu. How was it Chekhov and Sulu? Was it the other three? Hmm. We well, definitely saw these, the lighting effect on the bottom there, anti-grav sort of system. But this is the next generation era. Very plain. You could have done a lot more detail work, I think, on this, but the camera's not picking anything up from this. Apart from it just looks a little bit... Hmm. I mean, those the impulse, the blue impulse engine look quite good, but that's all. The warmer cells have been massively butchered on paint. Look at that there. That is shockingly bad. Hmm. That side's fine. I just got blob all over it, and the side's perfectly fine, but still missing on the front as well. It seems like there's more detail. Better paint needed. Even there, you've got bad on the. Oh no, that's fine, that blew off. Could do with a little bit more care and a lot more detail. This could have really, really handled. In fact, one of those nostrils on the top. Hmm. Nice, like it. Definitely like it. So, over here. Final one. Now I'll either like this or I won't. So this is Janeway's armoured shuttle. Very much on the style of that shape, looking like a Delta Flyer. Very nice. I know it's the wrong way around, but if I put it that way around, I've got this bar across the front of it so you can't really tell. So, shuttlecraft type 18H nanotechnology. Armour plating. Hmm. So let's get this out. I'm glad none of these are sellotaped in, to be honest. But these are tiny models. That's why you can justify having these as a shuttle pack, because they're, they're, they're ridiculously small. But the armoured version doesn't have any registry number. It looks like a Voyager with the nacelles the wrong way around. On the back, it's very much a Voyager shape, isn't it? You've still got to get the 
vents through for the warp nacelles, busted collectors, a massive seam line there. <laughs> oh. This is another one that could have possibly have done with more detail work. But it kind of looks odd with the paintwork on there and that bit looks like it's been sprayed on the side parts. I don't know, wouldn't it all be the same colour paint? It's a bit odd. There's a tiny deflector on the front as well. Surely these would be weak points. One would the bog think, yeah, blow that up, blow these up, done, happy. But they go on the side and then it's def it's deflected or underneath it or you just bang the in, in front, you borg. Why wouldn't you be able to target your weapons properly? Hmm, they're kind of funky purple bits on the back. Can I get the purple? Not much of, unfortunately. They must be covering the impulse engines. And like I said, this looks very much like the style of what Voyager is, apart from the nacelles being the wrong way around. Would it be? No, I don't know, right. Because on the back of the pylons were the impulse engines on the Voyager. I like that. I do like it. I don't love it, but it's a good part of the shuttle set. And on some levels, I'm quite glad to do these. They are expensive. If you get them from from scratch from day one, seventy-five pound is quite expensive for four models, which works out more than a standard issue. But you don't really get these. But I, I, I quite like them. I mean, it's it's on a side note. Email came through the other day from Eagle Moss stating that the uh, the. The first run, the original run for the Starship collection was going to end at 180. And the moment, I think, with these being out, I've paid for 164, 165. So once they come, there's only 15 more ships left to come. However, the wording on it was a bit weird. Because they were saying, yes, the, the collection's ending at 180, but they will be newer ones on the website. So whether or not they're going to do convention ones, whether or not they're going to carry on specials, whether or not they're going to carry on doing XLs, I don't know. It's a bit... You've told us? Tell us if it's going to be... I don't know. Are we going to finish or we're not going to finish? I mean, it's amazing we've had... We will be having 180 starships in the collection. It's amazing that we've probably got 20 specials We've got 20 bonuses, I don't know, and six packs of four of these. 32 shuttlecraft, no, 24 shuttlecraft, sorry. So 34 shuttles that we would never have had normally. I mean, that was in one episode, that was in one scene on a film, but it is Star Trek V. That was in a cup one, maybe two episodes as a, as a yeah, blinking, you'll miss it. And that was never in it. We would never have seen these sort of things as a, as a model kit, as a, as a, anything that anybody else would have done apart from what Eagle Moss have done with these, which is really, really good. And I'm, I'm so happy that they have done these, but it has to come to an end one day. So let's get these on top of here and start playing with them. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this, please, if you want to actually go buy it yourself, go on the Eagle Moss website. They are quite expensive. If not, wait for a voucher code or a discount or it's Christmas coming up. They might do some more sales at Christmas or New Year's. But these really are quite good. I really like the shuttlecraft sets because you get four very quick, easy models to play with. Review, should I say. <laughs> instead of just one per per fortnight but yeah thanks for watching please like subscribe follow me on on twitch not twitch twitter facebook discord usual gubbins and um i'll see you in another video bye for now